Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, mighty visitor from another world, who came to Earth when the planet Krypton was destroyed by quakes and explosions. And who walks about among human beings disguised as Clark Kent, news reporter for a great metropolitan paper. Sent to investigate remarkably accurate weather predictions by the famous meteorologist Horace Morton, Kent and Lois Lane have run head-on into mystery. Elmer Rogers, Morton's assistant, has been murdered during a violent storm. And when Kent went down the mountain to inform the police, he found that thieves had broken into the new Birmingham bank and locked its officers in the vault. Superman rescued the imprisoned men and then raced back to the lonely observatory, only to discover that Lois and Dr. Morton were nowhere to be found. As our story continues today, the police have arrived, and Kent is explaining the situation to the sergeant in charge. Listen. Listen, sergeant. During the storm, Miss Lane, she's Dr. Morton's niece, she and I were in the laboratory, up there at the head of the stairs. Yes. Well, we heard a shot. And when we came down here to see what had happened, we found Elmer Rogers. Shot? Shot and killed. With a revolver that was lying near him on the floor. Wait a minute. You say that you and Miss Lane, where was Doc Morton? He came in while we were bending over Rogers. He'd been out. Out where? I don't know. Okay. Then what? Well, I told him to telephone the police. But he came back after a while and said the wires were down. So I left him here with Miss Lane and hurried to New Birmingham myself. I told the police, then came right back. And here's what I want to tell you. There isn't a sign of either Miss Lane or Dr. Morton. They've, they've simply vanished. Huh? Well, where are they going? Well, if I knew, I'd tell you. Okay, we got to look around. Maybe they're hiding. Uh, you went over the place, upstairs and down? Everywhere except the cellar, if there is one. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Where's the door? Well, I don't know. Maybe through here. You want to take a look at Rogers on the way? What do you say, Devlin? Not much, Sarge. They got him all right. Shot from close by. We'll take the gun back and check it for print. Wait a minute. What's this here? Where'd this dirt come from? Oh, that's kind of gravel-like. He had it in his hand. Had it in his hand? Well, what is it? Here, you take a look. Where'd it come from? Looks like black dirt. Yes. You ever seen it before? No, if, if he had it in his hand when Miss Lane and I looked at him, I, I guess we missed it. If he had it in his hand. You don't think somebody put it in there later, do you? What's the matter? Shh. Keep quiet. Well, what's up? What do you hear? Beyond that door, just behind you. Someone is coming up a flight of stairs. Huh? What are you talking about? Bless my soul. Dr. Morton. Morton? Are you Doc Morton? Oh, of course. Uh, you went to get the police, didn't you, Kent? You know, I completely forgotten. Dr. Morton, where is Lois? Lois? Yes. Oh, dear me, uh, isn't she upstairs in the laboratory? That's where I left her. She is not in the laboratory. No? Then she's probably in bed. Sensible girl. Too much excitement. People getting killed, calling police. Dr. Morton, Lois is not in bed. As you know perfectly well. Where is she? My dear Mr. Kent. I left her here with you while I went to get the police. Now she's gone. Where is she? I give you my word, I haven't the faintest idea. Come on, Doc. What have you done with her? What have I done with her? What were you doing down in the cellar? My dear Kent, your tone. I don't like it. I don't care whether you like it or not. What were you doing down in that cellar? Devlin, go down them stairs and see what you can find. Okay, Sarge. Now then, Doc, come on, speak up. Didn't expect us to get here so soon, did you? You thought you'd get away with it. Well, come on. Let's have it. I really don't know what you're talking about. I want to know what you were doing down those cellar stairs. Well, if you must, I... I have a small chemical laboratory. When Lois and I were left alone, I advised her to find a book. As I recall, I, I left her reading. You left her? Where'd you go? I remembered I'd been working on an experiment. A new step in the breakdown of pitch blend. A what? I doubt if you'd understand. You know the new Birmingham ri refinery? The refinery? Yes. Sure, yes, what of it? I have some acquaintance with the director, Mr. Milo Fales. At his request, I have been investigating the breakdown of pitch blend ores into radium. Radium? You mean there's a radium refinery in New Birmingham? Yeah, that part of it's straight enough, but the rest ain't. I don't believe a word of it. Come on out. Wait a minute, Sergeant. I just thought of something. Where's that gravel? Here. Dr. Morton, look at this stuff. You know what it is? Where did you get that, Mr. Kent? It was in Roger's hands when he was killed. What is it? Pitch blend, Mr. Kent. 
the same very valuable pitch blend ore that I worked with alone in my cellar laboratory. You mean he stole it? It would seem so. Okay, that's enough for me. Method, that there gun. Motive, and I kind of he stole the radium. Opportunity, when you sneaked out and left Kent and Miss Lane alone. You're coming with me, Doc. And just what are you talking about, officer? You heard me. You're coming down to jail, and you're coming now. Oh, yeah, devil? Ain't nothing down there, Sarge. Just a little room and a bench with a lot of bottles and stuff. Wait. Any place to hide anything? No. It ain't more than 12 feet square. But right out of the rock. Get my coat, Devlin. All right. Come along, Doc. Doc. I protest. I protest most emphatically. This is an outrage. Monstrous. I shall complain. Okay, okay. Complain to the judge. But you're coming with me and you're coming now. (laughs) Hey, Devlin. You stay here and search the place. Okay. You too, kid. We want you for a witness. I'll send the coroner up. Sergeant, look. Tire tracks. What? Tire tracks. The car. What are you talking about? What car? Oh, uh, forget it. Forget it. I, I made a mistake. Uh. Devlin, you get out after that girl. Search the house first, then the woods. If you don't find her, we'll be back to the posse. I'll see you later. Come on. Come on back inside. You'll get soaked. No, you uh, you go ahead. Search the house. I'll look around outside. I don't mind the rain. Well, holler if you find anything. Find anything? I should say I have. Good thing that sergeant didn't question me. I almost gave myself away. Calling attention to those tire tracks. I almost blurted out that Lois's car was gone. Then they'd start asking me what I used to get to town in. Let me look at those tracks. Down the road. Ah, looks like a skid. It's traveling fast. Here, what's this? More tracks. There was another car here. Those aren't Lois's tire marks. Her car left in a hurry, and the second car went after it. Well, I think it's time Superman took a hand and went after them both. Up we go. Up, up, and away. Head on the narrow, twisting mountain road, wet and treacherous, Lois Lane desperately urges her car to its highest speed. Behind her, a second car, long and black and low, relentlessly closes in. Suddenly, the silver glitter of water, a narrow bridge, the second car creeps up, while high overhead, Superman streaks through the stormy sky. There it is. That's Lois's coupe. And she's driving it, but who's that chasing her? Great Scott, they're going at top speed, both of them. They're on the bridge. The second car's trying to pass. What? He's crowding Lois into the bridge. Got to get into this. Down. Down. They're forcing Lois over. Oh, she's crashed. She's going through the rail. She's in the lake. I'll have to let those other fellows go. Got to get Lois down into that water. Faster. Faster. Down. Oh. Oh, what's happened? What was it? Oh, it's... Miss Lane, you're all right. Just... just take it easy. Oh. Oh, Clark. Mr. Kent. The car. What happened? You had a nasty spill. A car shoved you into the lake. Luckily, I got there in time to pull you out. But... but where are we now? It was the strangest thing in the world. Just as I pulled you out, this fellow came along in his truck, and he's giving us a lift into town. Sure thing you know, mister. I'll have you up to that there hospital in no time. Miss Lane, how do you feel? I'm all right. But... But those men, where are they? What men? The ones that were chasing me. Oh, Mr. Kent, just after you left, two men came in a car. They were the ones who killed Rogers. I heard them. They didn't know I was there, but... You heard them confess to the murder? Well, Lois, M- Miss Lane, who, who were they? Oh, I don't know. They were after Uncle Horace, but but he was down in the cellar. He never even knew. Well, the, then what he said was true. He didn't do it. To do what? Kill Rogers. The police thought your uncle murdered Rogers because he'd stolen some radium ore. Oh, no, no. Poor Uncle Horace. Mr. Kent, it wasn't that at all. I heard the whole story. Those men, they were using him. They were criminals. You mean... Wait, Scott, do you mean they were committing crimes when they knew there were storms coming? Lois, Miss Lane, that, that explains everything. Oh, it was more than that, Mr. Kent. Uncle Horace, he didn't just forecast when storms were coming. He made them. What? But that's not possible. Oh, but it is. It is. I heard everything before they saw me. Uncle Horace made the storms. And he never knew what they were doing, but but Rogers knew, and he said he'd tell, and and that's why they killed him. Oh, Mr. Kent, Uncle Horace, where is he now? He's in jail, but he won't be there long. Hey, there. 
Never mind the hospital. Drive straight to the jail. Jail? Yes. Okay, mister. Right near there now. Good. Yeah, but, Lois, there's something I don't understand. Why were these men after you? Oh, they heard me. And I ran for the door and, and the car. I just got away, but, but they came after me. I drove as fast as I could to get to town and the police, but, but they came alongside on that bridge. Oh, never and mind. I... I know what happened after that. And boy, was it lucky. <laughs> oh, look. Here we are. There's the jail. Police headquarters. What? Oh, what's happened? Look at that crowd. Mr. Kent, what is it? Well, I... I... Hey, what's all the shooting for? Right. There's the man I want. Sergeant! Sergeant! What the? Hey, Kent! Yeah? Where'd you come from? Say, don't tell me you got the lane, girl. Sergeant, here she is, and she's told me the whole story. Morton didn't commit that murder. We've got to get him out. Where is he? Where is he? That's what I want to know myself. Doc Morton's gone. Gone? Gone where? What do you mean? I mean he's been snatched, taken away. Listen, I got him down here and put him in a cell. Then came the biggest explosion you ever heard. Explosion? There was a gang after him. They broke into his cell, and now they got him. Kent, if you know anything at all, who are they? What's it all about? Who's got them? And what are they going to do next? One mystery solved, only to lead into another. Horace Morton, famous scientist, revealed as the man who has found the secret of actually creating weather. But what of the mysterious group who have stolen him away? What do they intend doing? And what unbelievable climax lies ahead? Tune in next time and follow the story of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.